Welcome back, Seth Bling here. And today I want to show you the 5x5 TNT Cannon Challenge. The idea is you build a TNT cannon in this little 5x5 area. It always has to look like this. You have a little obsidian box with, well, there's a 7x7 obsidian box, but the building area here is only 5x5 blocks and one block tall. And it, the uh, TNT cannon that you build has to be completely self resetting. Now that was a dud. Um, that is, you. in order to fire it again, you can't do anything, but uh, there's a couple exceptions. You can place new TNT into a dispenser. If your build has any TNT in block form that gets fired off or used up as part of the shot, you can right-click to place those. Uh, TNT minecarts you can also place inside of dispensers. But otherwise, it has to completely reset itself to its original state after every single time shooting it. And you have to have a button on the outside, which actually triggers the cannon to fire. And so you press the button, it fires the cannon, and maybe damages the ground, hopefully. And if it damages the ground, then you can score the cannon. It has to always reset itself. If it, if it ever has any chance of destroying itself or anything like that, then it's not a valid entry into the challenge. So how do you score it? Well, basically, when you fire the cannon and it damages the ground, and you have to do it in a super flat world like this. It has to be, you, you have to use the redstone ready preset. But when it damages the ground, you mark the farthest away point, and then you calculate the city block distance, or taxi cab distance, Manhattan distance, L1 distance is another name for it, from the build to the um, farthest away ground level block. So if, if there's blocks destroyed further down, you don't count those only count ground level blocks and uh, so so the way that works is you can when you find that spot you can mark it with like obsidian and start building pumpkins towards towards your cannon and you keep building pumpkins until you reach <clears throat> the nearest corner or side of that obsidian cannon and uh, you just count the number of pumpkins and so it's a little bit different like it might be like 50 blocks from here to here or 50 meters, but you actually count the number of blocks. And so it's a little bit higher than you would get uh, if you were just measuring the distance with, with like a ruler or measuring tape. So city block distance, what that does incentivize is shooting diagonal uh, TNT cannons because you just get a higher score if you can count sort of, you can see zigzagging these blocks is much better than just putting the blocks in a straight line. So this is one example. This is the first example we played around with. You can see there's sort of water that pops up out of this dispenser to uh, get to basically push all the, the TNT from this one over to the side. And that helps it get in the right position to get launched off by all this TNT that spawns along uh, the bottom. And uh, so this water, even though it, it's sort of spawned outside of the 5x5 building area, that's OK because it gets reset automatically by, by the cannon. Um, and so you're not allowed to have any entities either as part of the build, though, of course, TNT is entities. You can spawn entities during the build, and that's fine, or d during the firing of the cannon, as long as there's no entities left when you when it's done. There's also this cute little uh, water-based delay here that we, that we used. Um, so that this is actually just used as a delay with the observer block here. And... Uh, and just like gets the right delay so that the TNT can has a chance to actually get over there and hit the ground before um, before exploding. Of course, it doesn't always hit the ground, and when it doesn't hit the ground, it doesn't score. But basically, you measure it just off of if it does hit the ground ever. Just you can basically try it as many times as you want to and try and get the high score that way. Um, but yeah, if the if the TNT cannon has any chance of blowing itself up. It's, that means it's not auto resetting and it's not a valid entry. So we played around with some other stuff. Uh, this was a, an infinite design by Shinrod D. The way it works is uh, basically you spawn five TNT minecarts and then they go off. And then if they ever do hit anything, oops, if they ever do hit anything, they all explode. <laughs> um, of course, this is not actually infinite because if it never hits anything, it never explodes. So. Yeah, I guess it would eventually hit the world border. I'm not sure if that would cause an explosion. But anyway, this is not a valid entry. Uh, but over here, we've just slightly modified it, adding an activator rail here. And so this is a valid entry. And basically, the activator rail sets the fuse on these TNT minecarts. And uh, and then to reset it, we can just put five new TNT minecarts in here. Make sure that when you're testing, uh, whoops, when, when you're testing these, you do. Uh, 
fill up this area with sands with fresh sandstone. Uh, bling edit's a great way to, way to do that. <laughs> um, you can just like fill with sandstone and yeah, just refresh all that. Make sure it's all make sure it's all fresh every time you you test. Anyway, this is sort of a silly idea, but it does actually get a score of like 40 blocks or something whatever the farthest explosion point was out here. Uh, but we played around with, uh, I did a live stream and I played around with a lot of the, these ideas. Um, we played around with TNT minecarts a lot and using those as a charge for an explosion. So here's the design. Uh, Reclan Arca helped me with this one. I sort of came up with this half of the design to um, basically spawn a bunch of TNT minecarts over here. And then uh, Reclan Arca came up with this half of the design that uh, creates a little clock that spawns a bunch of TNT minecarts. So basically this dispenser dispenses its TNT minecarts until it's empty and then they get launched over here. Once they get off their rails and hit the wall, oh hey that's actually a new high score. Uh, once they get off the rails and hit the wall they'll immediately explode and there's some TNT that comes out of this dispenser that gets fired off by all these five uh, or no nine, oops, uh, yeah that's right I didn't actually reset it. So to reset this one you got to, uh, that actually was not part of the reset, but you have to basically fill up with nine TNT minecarts. And so that's one of the allowed refilling uh, actions that you can manually take for, for resetting the, uh, the cannon. Oh wow, it's even farther. <laughs> We're getting all kinds of new high scores. We fired this a lot during the stream and it, it didn't go quite that far. Um, but yeah, you can see there's a dispenser here that sort of pops up a TNT and that's what gets launched way off. And there's actually a TNT that gets launched way up into the air too. But, uh, oh, it's even a higher score, I think. Oh, maybe not. Anyway, so to measure the score, we would take, uh, I think, I think this block has the highest city block distance. Mm, no, maybe it's, maybe it's this one. So we would take, or actually, I think it would be right over here. Yeah, because we're off to the side of it. So, so the easy way to do this is you press F3, you write down the, the coordinates, neg 629, 533, uh, and then you go over to the nearest obsidian block, which is this corner which is, uh, let's see, whoops, saved a screenshot. Uh, Neg 626, 596. And so in the X coordinate, that's only a difference of three. In the Z coordinate, that's a difference of, what's that, 63? So it's 66, you just add those two numbers together. 66 would be the total score for this one. So you can fire it as many times as you want to try and get a new high score. Um, here we've done the same thing except we just replaced this block with a dropper so we can get more TNT minecarts. So here's what it looks like with 11. And we got it a little bit farther and it takes a little bit longer to, to build up the, the charge. <laughs> it doesn't always hit the ground. It doesn't always have the time to hit the ground. So that's kind of the interesting thing about this is you don't necessarily want to fill it with as much charge as possible. If you fill it with 18, it'll really go flying, but it usually won't have time to land and hit the ground and actually cause damage to the ground and you need it to do that in order to score. So here's 18, let's just watch it, see how far it goes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here's something interesting. Uh, so this water is just a source block and a flowing water block. Normally, if you just placed water here, it would just, it would flow out and destroy all of these elements. So this is actually pretty easy to do. You basically just build, drop down a block here, put the water here, and then you can replace that block. And it just happens to work. If you provide any block updates to the source block, like if I break this block, or even if I just have like a detector rail here, that'll cause a block update to this. And so it, and it'll like flood everything. So you need to be careful that you don't provide any block updates to the source block. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's a little improvement. And then of course that goes straight to the side. Uh, this design over here, uh, Reclinarca helped again, coming up with this corner design so we could um, we could fire it diagonally. And so this one, we actually found the best number of charges was 10. So we just used that extra hopper or extra dropper for just one single extra TNT minecart. But we spit out 10 TNT minecarts. It comes over to the corner and some TNT. That wasn't a great shot, actually. That some TNT gets dispensed from here. Um, let's try that again, see if we can get a bit of a farther shot. So 10. Reset it, let it go. Uh, but yeah, the diagonal shot scores just naturally scores higher if you're using city block distance. Ooh. Oh, I didn't quite get to the ground. 
that would have been a new high score, I think. But we did at some point uh, have this little explosion, and this was the highest scoring block. 201 meters with 10 TNT minecarts is the high score. Um, that's pretty far. That's a lot farther than I thought we were going to get when I started. So that's pretty cool. It's, uh, there's some weird things about this, though. Uh, this, with 10 TNT minecarts, it seems completely consistent. If you put different numbers, like let's put 9 in this one and 5 in this one for a total of 14, this will sometimes blow itself up. If you have if you have different numbers of TNT minecarts in the system, for whatever reason, just because of the way the collisions and the explosions work, you can see, you can see that TNT minecart didn't go very far. In that case, it didn't actually blow itself up, but I have seen it do it. I bet if we try it one, one or two more times, we'll see it. So this... This cannon is only allowed uh, if you if you only put ten TNT minecarts in there. Um, ooh, no, that one didn't blow up either. But uh, we'll try one more time. But just take my word for it; it really can blow itself up if you put exactly fourteen. And there's there's a few different numbers where it will blow itself up. But with ten, it was completely consistent, and we tried it a lot of times. So uh, if if the cannon can ever blow itself up. It's not a valid entry. So test it a bunch of times, make sure make sure it can never blow itself up. The reason that I added that rule is just because it's really annoying to have to rebuild your cannon after every single attempt. So I didn't want people to like try and do that, to try and build a one one time shot cannon that they had to rebuild every single time. And I didn't want to compete against people that were doing that either, in terms of, you know, the best optimal build. So that's the rule. It's kind of arbitrary, but that's what I decided. Has to completely reset itself every time, and that plus it makes it more fun that you can just kind of fire it over and over again and just just watch it. It's it's pretty fun to watch these things go. Um, yeah, so there's technical rules in the video description. There's a link to that document, and uh, and and so if you want to try this out for yourself. Feel free, it's actually really fun to play around with. If you do come up with something that's really good, maybe even better than 201 meters, uh, what I would do is just take a video of it, of it doing that shot, um, and uh, and then take a video of, of you firing it and and uh, measure that distance by, by doing what I did, using the F3 and measuring the coordinates from the explosion to the, to the TNT cannon, and just send that over to me, probably over Twitter, at Seth Bling, and... Uh, yeah, but do test it a bunch of times to make sure that it's it's it will never ever destroy itself, because that's an important part of the criteria. I hope you guys come up with with some cool stuff. This is really fun to play around with. That's about it. Thanks for watching.